And then um, we will go ahead and begin as we always do at Yoga to the People in child's pose, please. So let's go ahead and begin by relaxing our hips back towards our heels and our forehead towards the floor. And immediately go ahead and close your eyes. Especially if you have gone through a good portion of your day already, your mind has filtered through so much information. Allow the eyes to shut so that way the energy can be pursuant of that one thing, that one essence of our practice, and that is your breath. So by closing the eyes and letting our head get heavy on the mat, suddenly all of our focus can be drawn to a full length and capacity of our inhales and the full completion of our exhales. And for the next 59 minutes or so, this truly is the barometer of our experience. Yoga is, I like to believe, a form of meditation. And one of the ultimate goals of meditating is to lose that natural inclination to label things to call something good, bad, difficult, or easy. And to start accepting your experience for how it shows up as it shows up. And so in this space on your yoga mat, the barometer to let you know whether to back off to go deeper in whatever interpretations those mean is the quality of your breath. And at Yoga to the People, we like to explore our breath using vibrations, using those very um, strong and healing waves that we produce all the time when we talk, when we speak, when we cry, when we laugh. And we like to use those vibrations to ripple through our body to open up some spaces and to perhaps touch places inside ourselves that fingers cannot reach. So to unify us wherever you are in the world, go ahead and exhale completely empty, empty, empty. Take in a full exaggerated inhale. So really swell the belly, spread the back, hold it at your peak. Open mouth, exhale, H A. Ah. Perhaps you begin to roll the forehead on the floor. Begin to sway the hips from side to side. And over the next few breaths, I encourage you to explore those vibrations. So maybe today it's not a ha, ah, but a hmm. Or perhaps it's a shh or a z. And if ever your ability to breathe in this kind of depth becomes jeopardized, you start holding your breath or clenching the belly, stop. Come right back here to child's pose and give yourself the opportunity to reconnect. So once more, wherever you are with your breath, exhale completely empty, 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 empty. Take a full exaggerated inhale from the base of the belly through the ribs that hits your heart. And exhale, H-A. <sighs> Begin to crawl your fingers long out in front of you, extending a bit more space in the pockets of the armpits. And notice what happens if you drop one shoulder down to the floor or the other. Gentle tugs along both sides of your body. And then plant the hands firmly on the mat. Spread your fingers wide so there's space between every digit. And then inhale, curl the toes under. Send your hips up high, heels down low, almost like downward facing dog. But before we get there, you just begin to move. You begin to explore what this inversion is like, keeping the head below the heart, and whether it's bending one knee and then the other, 
maybe it's shifting the weight forward into the shoulders and shimming them out. Perhaps it's as something as simple as rocking the head from side to side, shaking it yes, nodding it no, whatever it is, and just checking in with the body and seeing where it lands today. And then slowly we'll begin to clean up our downward facing dog so that it does become very specific. So let's go ahead and shift our shoulders over our wrists and come into an upper push-up plank position. Hips in line with those shoulders so it's as though I could balance a glass on your back and it won't roll from side to side or fall off, nice and even. Pull up on your quads, shift your ankles or heels over your toes so we're stretching the bottoms of our feet already. Imagine that you are knitting your low ribs in towards one another, like you're pulling the tops of your hip bones towards the lowest rib. Keep your hands and feet exactly as they are. Take a full inhale, press away from the floor, push into your thumb and index fingers. Exhale, send your hips high, heels low. And then allowing for a soft bend behind your knees and using the strength of your arms to shift more of your weight back into the legs. So not so much a hamstring stretch at first, rather it's a lengthening of the spine from your neck, so head is very heavy, all the way to your tailbone, which is beginning to tilt up towards the sky. Wherever you are, exhale completely. Deep, full, big and buoyant inhale. And exhale, H-A, ah. On your inhale, slide your right leg up. Spread or point your toes or flex the foot, but whatever you're going for, keep your right hip bone down towards the floor so your hips stay nice and level. And then feel for length all along right side body. So from pinky toe to pinky finger, sides of the neck still soft so the head is just hanging. Inhale, lift your leg a little bit higher, and then exhale, roll open the hip, perhaps you bend your knee. If you have space in your room, maybe you flip the dog, stretch the arm up high. Okay, but this is another moment to kind of move in a way that's completely unique to yourself, and not in a way that needs to be married to any sort of routine or habit. And what I mean by that is if you move in one way and it feels really good and sweet, Follow that movement. And if you move in a way that maybe feels a bit too sticky or a lot of resistance, try something else. Inhale, lift the leg up, up, up. Exhale, gently kiss it back down towards the floor and then follow your breath. Inhale, the left leg lift. Nice and long, so we're not just throwing it up. We're really gliding the leg in such a way that we're continuously creating a little bit more space all along left side body. Inhale, float the leg a little higher, and then exhale, roll open the hip or bend the knee, or maybe it's something else. And maybe that leg is becoming a conduit for another sensation in the body that you want to honor. So maybe it's dropping down to the floor or working into your core already. So good, everyone's moving so uniquely and on their own terms, I love it. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, release it back down towards the floor. And then bend your knees very deeply, almost like you would sit your butt onto your heels, look forward and take baby steps all the way up, all the way up in between your hands. So the tops of the toes are in line with the tops of your fingers. Separate your feet. Two fists in between the arches, that way we're anatomically hips width apart. And then inhale into a halfway lift. So bring your hands to your shins or your thighs and go for a 90 degree angle between your torso and your legs. So weight has to shift a bit more forward. Elongate your tailbone back, your arm hits towards the rear of the room and your chin slightly forward, so in long lines of energy. Take one more inhale here. And exhale, collapse, Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Andy, shake the head, yes, shake it out, no. Bend your knees slightly so that the belly can rest on your thighs. And then you decide whether to grab for opposite elbow, interlock the fingers behind the nape of the neck or the back. Whatever you're choosing though, the point is to notice what little effort is required to feel some really beautiful sensations. 
Closing the eyes, let your jaw, your face be super soft. And then on your next exhale, release the hands down. On your inhale, sweep the arms out, come all the way up to standing, nice and tall, your first Tadasana of class. So once you get there, arrive with an exhale and close the eyes. It's a super simple posture. There's not a whole lot to see, but a whole lot to feel from the inside out. Rotate your pinkies in towards one another. So now the shoulders can melt away from the ears and the neck muscles can remain soft. And then notice as you stand really firmly rooted through the soles, the feet, if we can still maintain a buoyancy, a trust in the structures of our body to hold ourselves up tall while still having a looseness and a freedom for the breath to be full on an inhale and complete on an exhale. Maybe you exhale with a hmm or a ha. Or perhaps you can even flutter your lips. If the eyes are closed, gently flutter your gaze past your fingertips up towards the sky. Take a full inhale to push your hips forward and to stretch your arms back for a back bend. And exhale, dive all the way forward, let it go. We'll do that three more times on your own. So inhale, we'll inflate you up to standing. Push down through the soles of the feet. Push your hips forward. Stretch the arms back. And on an exhale, you're going to hinge forward from your hips, releasing all the way down. Yeah, twice more. And you follow your breath. So as you inhale and you stretch, perhaps your capacity for inhaling increases. And as you exhale and you release, notice the point where gravity can just pull you. Let it. Yeah, one more time, maybe your deepest breath of your day so far. And then exhale, release and let it go. On an inhale, come into your halfway lift, flat back, firm belly. And then exhale, release, bend both knees, place both hands down, step your feet back and pause in that upper push-up plank position. So again, almost like you were, um, pulling the low ribs in towards one another. We want to maintain a neutral pelvis. So we're not tucking the butt under and we're not sending it skyward. We're imagining the hip bones growing a little bit closer to our lowest ribs. Keep your heels over the toes. Keep pushing into all 10 fingers, especially your thumbs. Take an inhale, press away from the floor. Exhale lower about halfway down. Elbows point back towards your hips. And then use your toes. Inhale, draw your heart forward. Untuck the tops of the feet. So you're just hovering in between your palms and your feet. Exhale, curl the toes under, hips high, heels low. Down dog. And that is our flow sequence. Let's do it one more time just to be sure we're being super clean and very specific. It's what ties one pose to another. So on your inhale, shift your shoulders over your wrists for high upper push-up plank. Exhale, lower just halfway. It is a moment. Use your breath. Inhale, draw your chest forward. Tuck the tops of the toes under so we were an up dog. Exhale, curl the toes under, hips high, heels low. Let it go. Yeah, notice the spine is a bit warmer now. The body's waking up. Begin to rotate your armpits in towards one another, almost like they could say high in front of the heart. Keeping the chest broad on both sides, back and front. On your inhale, glide your right leg up. Spread or point your toes, but find length. On your exhale, gently place the foot all the way forward in between your palms. Keep your back heel lifted so all 10 toes are facing forward. And then inhale, both arms up, crescent lunge. So especially at the beginning of this practice, and we're still pretty much in its infancy, noticing what's happening in the body before we get too stringent on the shape. Okay, so warming up that back leg, keeping the heel lifted. Maybe you want to begin to shift the weight forward or back, forward and back. Maybe you bend and straighten the back leg a few times. But you notice the difference and then choose to make it strong and taut like you're hugging the muscles into the bones. Yeah, that right knee is directly over the right ankle. 
And we're beginning to push our left hip forward as we swing our right hip back so the hips are nice and in one line. And we feel a gentle tug around left hip flexor. Soft shoulders, palms face one another. And if you're good here, maybe bring the palms to touch above your head. And if you're feeling pretty good there, maybe you just close the eyes. Take away the visual to connect with the internal. Take one more inhale to bend your front knee so you sit a little bit lower, stretch the arms back. And then exhale, release both hands down. Step your right leg long behind you and flow, upper push-up to lower push-up. Inhale, I pull the sides of my ribs forward. Exhale, I use my core, I find down dog. And then we follow our breath and we inhale, lift the left leg up. Again, find length first. And then exhale, silently place the foot in between your palms. So even if you need to walk your foot up using your toes or use your hand, try to get the tops of the toes in line with the tops of the fingers. Back heel stays lifted. Inhale, arms up, crescent lunge. Notice, right, even those gentle tugging along right side leg, right? And then if it helped you to rock the weight back and forth a few times, Go for it if it helps to bend and straighten the back leg a few times, why not? Give yourself the opportunity to ease into each of these postures. Gently tugging that right hip forward, that left hip back. Looks really good, Jean. When you, yeah, when you bring the arms back up, maybe tilt the palms out in front of your head just a little bit so that the elbows can remain straight. If the palms are pressing above you, maybe close the eyes. Take one more sweet inhale to dip your hips low. Maybe stretch the arms back. And exhale, release both hands down. Plant them first before stretching left leg back and moving through that flow, right? Inhale, I push into my thumbs. Exhale, I find familiarity in downward facing dog. And then that's one breath, one movement on your own. So on your inhale, you'll lift the right leg. On your exhale, you'll place it between your palms. Inhale, you'll lift the torso arms up. And as soon as you begin exhaling, you release the hands down. You step your right leg back and you travel through that flow. And it's very simple, right? How fully can I inhale and move? How completely and sweetly can I exhale and move? Oh, Kevin, I didn't recognize you because you're in a different space. <laughs> and then one more time, right side and left side. And especially right in this moment as we move through this first flow in a lunging stance, can you close the eyes and allow this to be a light and perhaps even playful practice? So even if you slow down or lose a bit of your balance, I allow this to be an exploration of your body in a way that's inviting, in a way that can be soft in the face and light in your heart. So good, Sarah, yes. And then once you finish your left side, we'll all meet in downward facing dog. And if you're flowing, you keep flowing. But if you're already there in down dog, go ahead and exhale completely. Really work to get empty, so force it out. And then take in a deep, exaggerated inhale. Get wide, big, huge, hold it. Exhale, H A. Soften your knees. Glance forward, step, or maybe you can hop to the front of your mat. Getting nice and heavy, separate your feet about hips width distance. On your inhale, halfway lift, chin slightly forward, pull space between every vertebra, shoulders down and away from the ears. Exhale, release, super heavy. With the feet remaining hips width distance, on your inhale, sit your hips down, arms up. Chair pose. 
Chair pose is exactly what it sounds like. So if you're new to this practice, you can go ahead and glance up at me, but it is as though we were sitting our hips down and back into an imaginary chair and we counterbalance the tendency or desire to fall back by stretching our arm up and forward slightly. Shift the weight back into the heels and you hinge and bend from your knee joints and your hip joints so that the torso does come somewhat at a 45 degree angle. The toes are pointing straight out in front of you and the knees are directly over the center of your feet. Pull your lowest ribs in towards your top of the hip bones so the core is engaged and then use your breath to exaggerate the stretch all along the torso, through the crown of the head to the tips of your fingers. Use your breath to facilitate a stretch and a strengthening. One more inhale, sit your hips low, stretch your arms high. Exhale, forward fold. Head so heavy, neck so soft that everything becomes like pudding, kind of just melting off the bones. Work when you need to work. Relax and give, surrender when you can, right? That is a huge part of this practice. On your next inhale, sit your hips down, arms up, second set. Now we revisit postures again and again frequently in this vinyasa style class because we want to give ourselves the opportunity to first identify the posture, how does our body maintain the shape, and then most importantly, how can I allow my experience to exist within the container of the shape? So close the eyes and don't worry about what it looks like. What does it feel like? And then without becoming attached to those labels, whether it's good, bad, challenging, easy, sweet, whatever it is, what is the quality of your breath? Inhales, I lengthen. And exhales, I soften. And yeah, now is a good time to fire a ha or a hmm or shh. Let's take one of those all together. Wherever you are, exhale. Take a deep inhale to stretch the arms high. Exhale, H-A, ah. One more time, inhale, sit low, reach long. Exhale, forward fold. So good, that was a strong moment, you guys. Inhale into a halfway lift, weight slightly forward. Exhale, hands down step or maybe you can even jump your feet back and come through that flow. If you're jumping back, try to um, land with bent elbows, right? Let there be a little bit of shock absorption in the joints. When you find we're facing dog, inhale, the right leg will lift up. Exhale, sweep it forward and through. Back heel stays lifted. Inhale, rise up, crescent lunge. Listen carefully. Exhale, release your back heel down, bring right arm forward, left arm back, warrior two. So in this stance, we make sure that the back leg is long and straight to support a deep bending in the front knee. And if you glance over the right knee, you can see a sliver of that big right toe. Tuck your tailbone just a fraction so that you allow the hip bones to spread open. And then lean the upper body back so shoulders and hips are stacked. Belly is drawn in just to support the lengthening of the ribs away from the waist. And then spread your arms apart. Spread your fingers wide, right? Because they're not casualty in the practice. They really are infused with the practice. Soften the face over your right shoulder. And then stay low in your lunge. Flip your right palm up. Inhale, reach the arm forward. Exhale, sweep the arm up. First and then back, reverse warrior. So the back hand comes above or below your back knee. You continuously push the right knee forward as you stretch the ribs high and then back, almost like you were fanning open a feather all along right side body. If you have the arm behind your back, really push that thigh away from the hip bone. Keep the back leg long and strong. You've got it, strong moment. Inhale, draw the knee forward, fingers back. Exhale, cartwheel, both hands down. So good, Elizabeth. 
right leg back, upper push up to lower push up. Inhale, I find up dog, I push into my thumbs. Exhale, I find downward facing dog. And then I move, inhale, left leg up, long and strong. Exhale, I gently place the foot forward. Inhale, I find crescent lunge again. And then exhale, I simply peel open, left arm forward, right arm back, warrior two. And your right and light, left side will probably be a little bit different. So adjust your stance accordingly. Perhaps this is the side you take a bigger step. Maybe you can sit lower in that lunge. Right? Or maybe this is the side that requires a bit more tenderness and you back off. Wherever you are, be sure the knee is directly over the center of that foot. Looks really good, Sophie. Can you sit even a little bit lower? <laughs> yeah. Push your hips slightly forward. Lean the upper body back. Use your breath. And then glance over the left palm, flip it skyward. Inhale, stretch forward. Keep yourself in the lunge as you lift the arm up, 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 and then back. So your back hand is very softly resting above or below your back knee. And it's as though you had little magnets on each individual rib that were stretching up towards the sky, right? So finding the energy wanting to pull you up, but finding a rootedness and strength in the lower body that keeps you solidly down. Take one more inhale to draw your knee forward, stretch the ribs apart. Exhale, release, both hands down. Step your left leg back and flow. Hide alone. Chrissia, I don't know if that's your son or who it is, but same, all the time, every time I practice. When you find down dog, take a full inhale on your own. A complete exhale on your own, get empty first. And then inhale, inflate the right leg to lift up and back. Exhale, bring it all the way forward and don't move into crescent lunge until you inhale. And then one breath, one movement on your own. And it's an incredibly powerful thing to hear on your own. And what I want you to know is that doesn't mean by yourself. And that doesn't mean you are doing yoga alone. What it means is that you are cultivating a very strong relationship with the organic rhythm that is completely unique to you. Now I inhale and I move. Now I exhale and I move again. And it's that very simple thing that we perhaps take for granted, that inhalation and exhalation, that is the most valuable tool we have with us. Get to know it, get to enjoy it. Even breathing in yoga should feel good. And then once you've finished your left-hand side, we'll meet in downward facing dog. And if you get there before everyone else, great. And choose to get what you need out of it. So whether it's reintroducing movement at any point, coming up onto the tiptoes or maybe flipping underneath the toes, like whatever it is, right? This down dog is not static or stoic, there's movement. And then all together, wherever you are, exhale. Take a deep, big, vibrant inhale. Exhale, let it go, H-A. <sighs> Soften behind your knees. Look forward between your hands. Take a deep inhale, and then hop forward in between your hands as best you can. Yes, that was good. Good job. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release, forward fold. Bring your feet together so that your toes and heels touch. On your inhale, sit your hips down, bring the arms up. Thunderbolt. So Thunderbolt is very similar to chair, chair pose. We're shifting our weight back into the heels and we're bending for finding these angles in our knees, in our hips, so that from the side, we do look like that nice Thunderbolt shape. Squeeze your inner thighs or your knees together. Squeeze your palms all the way to the edges of the pinkies. So even if you need to tilt your hands out in front of the face, 
make sure that you're ironing out any kinks in the shoulders, in the elbows, and the wrists. Take a deep inhale to sit a little bit lower. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Now stay in it, please. Push your thumbs into your breastbone. Inhale, puff up your chest high. Exhale, hinge forward and bring your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. A little bit of a twist. Now the tendency is to allow that right hip to drop forward. Pull it back so the knees stay in one line. And then push your top hand into your bottom. And listen, if you can't get the twist yet, that's okay. Use your bottom hand and wrap it around your thigh. Glance over the left shoulder wherever you are. Keep squeezing your legs together like mad. Don't hang out, use the moment. Take a full inhale, reach or roll it open. Exhale with control, come right back to center. Shoulders and hips nice and stacked. Take a deep inhale, lift your chin and chest high. Exhale, opposite, left elbow to the outside of your right knee. All right, so tuck your left hip back. You can glance down at your knees and literally see if they're in one line. If they're not, fix it, right? So Gabe, tuck your left hip back like one more centimeter. Yeah, sitting nice and low. Push your top hand into your bottom. Stretch open the collarbones and the heart space. Breathe there, right? Compression in the belly. Stretch open the low back, the low lungs. Take one more full breath in. Exhale with control, right back to center. Stay in it, it's a moment. Inhale, squeeze your legs, lift your chest high. Exhale, forward fold. Nod the head, yes. Shake it out, no, let it go. Inhale, inflate you into a half lift. Exhale, release both hands down. Step your feet back. Pause in an upper push-up plank. Hold it. This is going to be a moment, so I'll just be transparent as I can be. When I first came to yoga, I was not athletic at all. I mean, I'm not super athletic now, but at least I do yoga. And I thought it was kind of a joke form of exercise. And the first time I did yoga, it was super stereotypical. The guy was um young and he had long hair and he tall with his eyes closed very hippy dippy and i was like i don't know what i'm gonna get from this guy but i i guess i already set aside my time i might as well get something and we got to this point in class where we were in upper push-up plank and he was like great inhale push out of your thumbs push out of your thumbs please exhale lower halfway down and then inhale squeeze it out push it up yeah it was the first time in my life i'd ever done a push-up we're gonna do it again. Take a deep inhale, exhale lower, just halfway, squeeze your glutes and push it out. Stay in it, deep inhale, exhale lower, halfway down, chin away from chest please, squeeze it out. And then listen carefully, this is the ridiculous part, the part that needs to be playful and light. On your inhale, lift your right leg up. On your exhale, extend your left arm forward, Find the balance. And if you're like, what? No way, I can't, I won't, then you won't. But you never know unless you try. So flex your toes, spread your fingers, reach your limbs apart, upper push-up plank. Find it, you've got it. Where's your breath? Wherever you are, exhale, H-A, ha. And then inhale, left leg up, right arm forward. Send your limbs in opposite directions. Push into your thumb, push into your big toe. Find it and don't give up. You've got it for three. Stretch for two. Release. Child pose. Hips down towards the heels. Forehead towards the floor. Let it go. Yeah, let it go. And if you're like, I could do that again. You can do it again, but it's an invitation to check in with your breath. Check in with your heart rate. Check in with your mind. You know, it's super easy to find this practice as an isolated moment in your day. It's yoga. You move, you breathe, you stretch, you feel good while you're in it. 
And then your yoga class ends and you go into the kitchen and it's a disaster because your partner decided to make some kind of concoction and didn't want to clean it up. And you're like, what the fuck? I was just in such a good mood. You just took away my yoga. Or you walk off your mat and you realize perhaps for the 10th time today, I'm alone again. I'm sheltering in place again. And it feels terrible. Or maybe you have a completely different experience. What I want you to know and what I want you to get from this practice is that no matter what is happening in your life, be it circumstances outside of our bodies or literally within the body of a push-up or some odd spinal balancing, there is a stillness and a power within you that's not just about endurance or strength or flexibility or being able to bear down in it. There is a silence and a tenderness that deserves your attention. And the barometer of where that attention is resides in the quality of your breath. So maybe it's not a ha today. Maybe it's a cry. Maybe it's letting that breath of pain or laughter or happiness or anger come out because it needs to, because it will. Your yoga practice is a place to practice letting your feelings exist and being okay with them outside of the circumstances. Wherever you are, please exhale all of your air out, empty, empty, empty. And greet that with a very full, voluptuous inhale. Fill it up, every crevice, every hollow. Exhale, let it go. If the arms aren't already there, go ahead and bring them out in front. Spread your fingers very wide, curl the toes under, lift your hips up high, heels down low. Return to downward facing dog. Shake the head yes, shake it no. Push into all 10 fingers, gentle opening behind the knees. The ankles are soft. On your inhale, lift your right leg up. On your exhale, bring it forward and through. Back heel down, inhale, glide up, warrior one. And with the arms above you, perhaps press the palms. Can you close your eyes? And especially if you practice frequently, maybe this warrior one seems a bit delayed, but notice where the body can land in it now that we've opened up. Now that we've become tethered to a fullness and an inhale and a complete softening of an exhale. Back leg is long and strong. Right knee is over the ankle. Take a smooth inhale, sit a little bit lower. On your exhale, bring right arm forward, left arm back, warrior two. Stay grounded in the heels and the outside edges and balls of your feet. Stretch the armpits, soft inner edges of the elbows away from one another. Fan the fingers as though you could feel air caressing around every single individual digit. Stay low in your hips. Take a full inhale. Exhale, bring your right hand down to the inside of your foot. Left arm high up to the sky, side angle. And then don't be afraid to allow the weight to be captured in your bottom hand. As much as you push down through your right hand, stretch up for your left fingers. Maybe even use your shoulders or that arm to push the knee so it stays stable over the center of your ankle, your foot. Take a smooth inhale. Exhale, draw the left fingertips forward so the bicep is alongside your ear. And then there's one long line of energy from the outside edge of your foot through those top fingers 
And then bend your elbow so you rest your forearm on that quad just behind your knee. So no matter where you are, you can do this moment. It slowly becomes a core strengthener. And if you're okay here, maybe you up the ante by extending your right arm to frame your face. Roll the right shoulder forward and the left shoulder open. You've got it for three, for two. Release, left hand down, right arm up. And then keeping your back your back foot down onto the ground. If it's popping up, just drop down to your back knee. Untuck the back toes, but wherever you are, try to bring your inner thigh and torso closer, your knee and shoulder, your armpit closer. Take a deep inhale, stretch straight up towards the sky. Exhale, bring your right arm to the inside of your knee, behind your calf, and clasp the outside of your ankle. So if you're unsure of what that looks like, you can glance up here at me. You just extend your right arm straight out. Bend the elbow like you're gonna touch your navel and then stretch your arm behind your leg. Yeah, and then once you clasp on, really let it go. That was good. Yep, exactly. Let the head go. Let the neck go. Let your belly go and let the lower body support the stretch. So. Shanta, that definitely has a good activation on your left quad. Can you drop down to the left knee though and untuck the toes? So instead, yeah, eventually it's like you were gonna slide your shoulder underneath the knee. Yeah, so the neck doesn't really have to do a whole lot. We just let our body uh, fall forward. It can feel a little awkward at first, especially if you haven't practiced this before. Breathe into that space. Take one more deep inhale. And then exhale, come into that bind. So maybe it's left arm behind your back, right arm underneath your thigh. You can bring the hand to the inside of the thigh or grab for fingertips or clothing, but whatever you got, you just hold on to it for three. Roll it open for two. And then you'll release both hands down. Step your foot back and come through a flow patiently. Especially as we open up that side of our body, you might feel a little lopsided as you move through the flow. Great. Observe it. Treasure what you observe. And then with eyes closed, if you can, inhale, lift your left leg up. Exhale, silently place your foot in between your palms. Back here rotates down now. Inhale, torso up, arms up, warrior one left side. Knees over that front ankle. Back heel is firmly rooted into the floor. So now there's this beautiful um, wrapping of our thighs that allows the left hip or the right hip to be a bit more open. Arms are straight and strong so that the energy doesn't get caught in the shoulder, elbow, wrist, or knuckles. So maybe even gently press the palms above you. Looks so good. Is it Human? Can you get that uh, right hip forward just a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take one more inhale, sit a little bit lower. Exhale, left arm forward, right arm back, warrior two. Yeah, and then clean it up, right? Don't let go of the foundation. The torso is gonna do a lot of things to activate the core. Keep the legs firm and steady. Take a smooth inhale, stretch the arms apart. Exhale, left hand down and right arm straight up towards the sky. Long lines of energy equal and opposite. So as you push the bottom hand down, you're gonna stretch the top arm up. If you can sit a little bit lower in the hips, do so, but keep that back, the outside edge of your back foot firmly rooted into the ground. Take one more full inhale to stretch the arms apart. Exhale, bend the elbow, place the forearm on top of that thigh. Yep, oh, and extend the right bicep alongside the ear. Thank you, Sarah. Long lines of energy all along right side body. So as we stretch, go ahead and bend the arm. Place some of the weight directly into that forearm as best as possible. And then maybe extend the left arm up to frame the face. 
Wherever you are, roll the bottom shoulder forward, roll the top shoulder open towards the ceiling and breathe for three, for two, gently release, right hand down, left arm up, revolve it. And again, if it's torquing on your knee or even your hip, just drop down to the back knee and untuck those back toes. But try to get your torso and thigh closer. Looks really good, Molly. Try to get your knee and shoulder a bit closer as well. Spread your top fingers open. So glance over the shoulder. Check them out. Don't let them be casual. Inhale, reach, roll it open. Exhale, release the arm to the inside of your knee, behind your calf and wrap both hands around your ankles. Yeah, and then let the torso hang heavy. Let the neck and those shoulder muscles, especially the traps, so the muscles that collide where the shoulders and neck meet, let those be soft. Eyes closed not getting too heady about it. Leave yourself alone and use your breath to fuel whatever the body is going through to be the clear barometer of the choices you're making. So if you need to back off, back off. But if you can stay in it, stay in it. Be willing to discover what happens when you do. Take one more full breath here. On an exhale, peel open right arm behind your back. Left arm maybe comes underneath the thigh. You grab your fingers. Maybe on this side you can get the fingers. Maybe it's closing. Maybe it's your inner thigh, but whatever you've got, roll it open. Breathe in it for three, for two. Release both hands down. Left leg long behind you. Come through your flow. Inhale, I press my arms straight into up dog. Exhale, I pull in, I curl in, I find down dog. And then wherever you are with your breath, exhale completely. Take a deep, deep, deep inhale. Exhale, let it go. On your inhale, lift your right leg up. On your exhale, bring it into your half pigeon, meaning bring your knee and shin to the floor, knee is wider than your shoulders or your hips. And then untuck your back toes by dropping down to that back knee and try to square off your hips as best you can. So maybe that means bringing this ankle closer back towards the hip today, that's fine. Inhale, find length and lift throughout the ribs, throughout the shoulders. Exhale, gently peel yourself forward and bend down. And then you can capture the weight of your head with the hands, maybe a pillow nearby, or perhaps it's your soft mat. Wherever you are, we've moved so much in the body, we've allowed the hips to fuel so much heat, spin so much fire, that in this soft reckoning of half pigeon, it can be a bit unjarring at first. Close your eyes, check in with your breath. Your inhale, and your expulsion of an exhale, getting rid of what you do not need. Because if you don't get rid of it here, you just get to walk with it a little bit further. You get to carry it a bit longer. And that can certainly be a powerful choice, but perhaps you don't need to carry it anymore. You can afford to drop it by the wayside and keep going. Last few moments, 
Allow yourself to find an avenue of depth that feels good. So maybe it's physical, like separating your elbows wider or walking your foot closer to the front of your mat, unclenching your tongue or your belly. Or maybe it's a thought that keeps coming up for you or an emotion that doesn't want to give way for anything else. You don't need to judge it and there is nothing to fix. Come back to your breath. Now I inhale and now I exhale. And if I am breathing, there was more right with me than there will ever be wrong. Take one more breath on your own, please. And then take your time as you press away from the floor. As you lift up the heart and gently place the hands down and move through your flow, upper push-up to lower push-up. And you will flow into your left side as though you were flowing through honey because it is sweet and slow. And as you place the left knee down, be sure it really is over to the left. So maybe even exaggerate it all the way to the outside edge of your mat. Back knee down, back toes stretch behind you so the weight isn't rolling to the arch or the outside, it's directly over the center of your foot. Inhale, stretch the torso long before exhaling it forward. So we're never just rounding over that front shin, we're really draping and lengthening all the way. And once you get there, be there. How often have you said to yourself, I can't wait to get to yoga. I can't wait to get to yoga. And then you're in yoga and you're like, I can't wait to make dinner. Can't wait to get that laundry done. I can't wait to call my friend. You know, be here now. Your mind is supposed to race. Feelings are supposed to happen. The heaviness of it all comes when we become a slave to those thoughts or those feelings. And we forget the flexibility that innately exists in our bodies, in our minds, in our hearts. This is when all of the pets come out in yoga. They're like half pigeon, okay. I can step on my, on my master's back. <laughs> Last few moments. Allow yourself to find the sweetest, best half pigeon you can today. I really believe in the benefits of this practice. And I'm also very aware that no one can give it to you. And the benefits don't come from a pose. And the benefits don't even come from a sequence, especially not a teacher. Any good or benefit you derive from yoga is because of how you show up and what you choose to give to yourself. It's a big deal. Slowly begin to push yourself away. Gently bring your left leg long and come through your final, final flow of class. Feel the rush of air, fill the lungs in your up dog. And feel the power of expulsion as you exhale into down dog. 
and then say goodbye to it. Whether it's lifting one leg up, then the other, shaking out a leg, shimming out the shoulders. And then shifting the weight forward so we're back in our upper push-up plank. Take a smooth inhale and then slowly begin to lower yourself all the way down. Slow, 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 slow. Yeah. Extend your right arm out in front of you. Roll to your right side and bend the knees and softly, almost like a fetal position. Close the eyes and notice, scanning the body here, what you may want to end your practice with. So maybe this is the perfect position to end class in, or maybe you're looking for a bridge, a wheel, a plow, or something else. No teacher knows what you need. So take your time and give what you need to yourself. Make it the best practice it can be. A few announcements as you are ending class. Um, we are really excited to be reaching people through um, our teacher training program. If you're like, I don't want to teach, I have nothing to teach. You know, we can, we are, have gotten quite good over the last 13 years of learning to teach people history and asana and lineage and practicum. All of those things can be taught, but what we can't teach you is that inner pulse and innate truth that we all uniquely carry. And those are the tools that this training provides so that you can speak your truth with a power that can resonate with others and share the powerful practice that this is. If you're interested, you can um, chat with me after class or go to our website, yogatothepeople.com. We have a teacher training button. And then go ahead and begin to bring your legs long out in front of you, arms by your sides with your palms facing up. Close the eyes. Allow your head to roll from side to side until it finds a resting point. Thank you for coming to class today. Thank you for choosing to be part of this community. And the community exists, yes, only because of your donations, but also because you choose to be part of the community because you choose to bring and invite your family and friends and share with them what you've gotten out of these 60 minute classes. Thank you. We are here as long as you continue to show up in this way. We'll end with a quote and a collective breath. And then I invite you to stay in the Shavasana as long as you need. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide. One last collective breath. This time, if you would please hiss out all of your air. Breathe out with a very full, rich, perhaps loving inhale. Let it swell. Exaggerate the exhale. Thank you for class.